Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be hanging out with Adam Petro. He runs Man Cave Video Podcast. Adam, you want to tell him a little bit about your podcast? Yeah, uh, we do all kinds of stuff just talking about uh, all kinds of ideas and guns and stuff like that on the podcast. Um, and just anything you can think of uh, when you're having a beer and chilling in the Man Cave with the guys is basically what we do. So I've been following Adam for a while and his podcast honestly is a breath of fresh air. Uh, normal dudes having normal conversations and I'm really, uh, really, really excited to be a part of this today. So follow us and see some of the conversation. Hit it. <laughs> All right, cool. Have you ever been to the range with your wife? Yeah. Uh, you're, you're, Absolutely. you're pretty firearm savvy, right? A lot of a lot of us, a lot of uh, pro Second Amendment guys spend a lot of time at the range. We get right. really good. What, what's funny is you could you could tell your wife, um, you could tell your wife like, do this and do that. I've actually had my wife go, well, what do you know? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. Well, shit. Uh, but you some know who the worst person was for me though. My wife actually listened to me pretty pretty good. It was my mom, trying to teach my mom. I would teach. I would. I took my mom out one day and I taught her. And I was trying to teach her, like, hey, do this, do this, do this. And she literally turned to another guy that was there, and I won't say names, but this guy was more tech or more uh, firearm savvy than I was. Who He was an actual instructor, but he was like, he literally just told you everything that I would tell you. And she said, but I want you to train me because you're an instructor. Jesus. And I was like, well, f me, right, Mom? Like, <laughs> you literally just turned to a random guy you met 10 minutes ago because he's a firearm instructor. You're going to train, have him train you. So, but that's, that is how my mom is. She wants to learn. I guess that's how she is. She wants to learn from somebody who has that title. And some people are like that, right? If you have the title, then that means more to somebody than just a guy who knows firearms. So you did two tours in the Marine Corps. Yeah. And then you got out, you did another tour. Yeah, I got out. Back to Iraq. So I went uh, Haditha, Fallujah, and then uh, became a, a firearms instructor at Edson Range, got out. Uh, I met my wife my last year in the Marine Corps, and she was from Washington. Okay. Uh, and I, so I moved up here. I, so that's what brought you up this way from, yeah. from Cali. I hated Washington the first time. <laughs> Absolutely hated it. I mean, it wasn't, um, it wasn't what I was used to. You're looking at this time that I got out, you're looking at the end of the recession, right? right. There isn't much. Uh, and. Going, and I'm pretty sure you could relate to this, but going from the Marine Corps and getting out, having all this experience, and um, the best you can do is find a job for $10 an hour. Right. You know, it's kind of like demotivating. It's a hit to your pride for yeah. sure, man. Oh. I felt it. Yeah, you hit it right on the nail. It's yeah. it, it, right in your pride, man. Like, it, it, it affects you. Heavily. Yeah. You train a bunch of kids, and you're like on this high of, like, I am, I am, Validated. I, I have some importance, right? Yeah. Then you get out, and nobody you gives a shit. The bottom of the right. barrel once again. And you watch the news, and you're like, uh, right when I was getting out, Afghanistan was getting heavy. Obama oh, yeah. was sending a bunch of people back, and um, I felt like I had played in the NFL and retired, and my team was going to the Super Bowl again without me. Rudy Mendez, he is my shop manager. He is um, he is the muscle in in my business. Um, this dude uh, was working as a gun counter manager over at uh, Tri-State, a company that went out of business oh, because maybe of that's where I know you for, or seen you. Maybe not know you, but seen yeah, a lot of, a lot of people okay. in town know Rudy. Yeah. Tri-State goes down. Uh, Edgar is starting up this store. Um, Sorry to fast forward no, to the story right. here, but um, we can go back. We can, we yeah. can go back. Yeah. 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 So Edgar had started this shop. I saw it uh, in the paper. Um, yeah, in the in the local news here. Um, and by the grace of God, I, start, I come here, and he happens to be here in the shop because it was by appointment only. Yeah. Um, COVID. Yeah. Well, COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Not essential. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> There's so much knowledge that isn't kicked out to the masses. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, there's so much information that people from certain areas just don't have. But if they had it and they realized how easy it is, you know, to actually 
utilize your, your rights and own a firearm, more I feel like more people would do it. And yeah, so, the so. education is something that's that's really heavily applied here. People walk out of here knowing something knowing something new, knowing something different. Here people come and will work with you, build it with you, educate you, or if you just say, I will go through all of the parts with everybody from, from top to bottom and uh, basically go, go through everything, pricing, quality, brands, whatever you want to go through. If the end result is they're getting exactly what they want. Right. And you know, I remember going to Walmart and I would pick up a brick of 200 rounds of 9 mil or 40 and it was super cheap. I mean, 9 mil was like 40 bucks for a brick of 200 rounds back then or a brick of 40 was like, I think it was like $62 after tax. And I'd go out there and I'd shoot a whole 200 round brick of 40 or two or nine millimeter or both, you know, just depending. And that was cheap ammo. Nowadays, I'm like, oh, I don't even want to go to the range hardly because of how expensive ammo is. But right. you got to get your practice in. I remember complaining about uh, a thousand rounds of nine millimeter costing me like 220 bucks. Oh, I know. And, and like now, now I, I would give, it. yeah, <laughs> I give my left nut to have that back, right? You know, but oh man, just just so it's on the record, Edgar said he would give his left nut, <laughs> no, that's the best to get back cheap ammo. Actually, so yeah, if it comes back, I'm gonna hold you to that. <laughs> I will come back to Washington to collect your left nut. <laughs> just make yeah. sure a trained professional removes it, right? <laughs> All right, guys, that was the video today. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I definitely had a blast. I know Rudy definitely had a blast. Adam, you have any? No, thanks for letting me come in the shop today, man, talking guns and stuff. It was really good talking with you. I had a, had a good time getting your background and everything uh, for other people to hear. So, yeah, I'm excited about this podcast and uh, getting it uploaded. Awesome. So, again, it was Man K Video Podcast. If you're looking for something new to listen to, something really refreshing, just normal dudes having normal conversations, Adam's the place to go. Rudy, you got any thoughts at the end here? Uh, that was pretty cool. Never been in a podcast before. So, yeah. Really neat. Neat? Neat. neat. Did he say neat? He said neat. He works at a gun <laughs> shop and he says neat? That was <laughs> dope. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, Rudy's fing boring. <laughs> We're good. Oh, man.